to die. Um, first of all, the real question is, where the fear actually lies? Is it in death, that is the state of being dead, or is it actually dying? And the answer is dying. You and I dying. When you and I will cease to exist, that's what we are afraid of. <clears throat> now, why are we afraid to die? Uh, well, the answer to that could be that we are not ready for it. We think that uh, it's a waste because we still have responsibilities and duties to fulfill. We feel a sense of betrayal towards our family and loved ones, that they will feel hurt when we are gone at some point of time. We are extremely helpless because this is one thing that you and I cannot do anything about. <clears throat> and the biggest fear is, because it's a mystery, what happens to us when we are dead, that we still don't know. <clears throat> We do have some tales and stories that we tell each other about it, though. The first being egocentric theory. <clears throat> that is, let us imagine that you are the only person who exists, and you are imagining this entire universe. That means I am your imagination. These people sitting around you are also your imagination. The chair you are sitting on, light, air. Each and every atom is your imagination, which sounds extremely awesome to you, because then you are the creator. Because you imagine this, you are the god. I'm not into a discussion if God exists or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, you are the god here. But what about others? What about me? I am reducing myself to an entity. I'm only your imagination. I'm not a real being. So this theory can be extremely offensive to people who are not God. That is, people who are being imagined by the God. <clears throat> Christianity believes that the people who do good in their lives go to he heaven. <laughs> and, uh, the ones who have been unfaithful and have done bad deeds in their lives go to hell. Um, Hinduism believes in reincarnation. It believes that you are reincarnated 52 million times as plants, animals, and so on before taking the form of us humans. And the ultimate goal is to achieve nirvana or moksha or ultimate peace. <clears throat> there are many believers of paranormal uh, theory. That means that people who believe in this theory actually think that once we are dead, we can contact our loved ones through paranormal activities, such as moving a table or activities such as, you know, which are ghostly to us. <laughs> uh, many believe in rebirth. They believe that being born is a continuous process like a cassette tape. You die, but then you reborn. So you are never actually dead. <clears throat> Egyptians believe that you take another, it's well, it's similar to re uh, being reborn. So they try to preserve their bodies, the dead bodies, after they are dead, so that they are in the finest of state when they take birth again. <clears throat> what the signs say, quantum physicists believe that bodies die, but consciousness lives forever. That means you are eternal. You're conscious, not your body. <clears throat> the people who have had near-death experiences when asked, they tell you that when they are about to die or they have just died, but they were revived, they say that they see a very strong bright light. They can actually see doctors and nurses operating on their bodies while their soul leaves their body, which is horrific. Um, 
and well, doctors see a very sharp, very sharp spike in our brain when you are medically dead, but your brain is still alive. Some explain it as neuron rush, which means that your brain is trying to recall all the memories of your lifetime before it completely switches off. <clears throat> um, but are these theories correct? No, they are just tales being told by you and me. So why do we actually tell each other stories? Some people are extremely, extremely fascinated about death. Very few of us. And they make tales. Many of us, well, most of us are extremely, extremely scared for, about death. So what do we do? We are even scared to think about it let alone form a philosophy about it. So we just believe what others believe in. Now, how can we not fear death? As I said, fear, well, man can never stop to fear things. We can either lessen our fears, or we can live with that fear throughout, and ultimately we are going to die. So according to me, finding a purpose of life is the key to not fear death. <clears throat> now, what is it? We have heard this a million of times. But for, it, the well, it can be different for different people. I believe that my purpose of life will be achieved if there, there's the slightest of change after I'm dead, after I stop existing. But it was created due to my activities when I'm alive. I think then my purpose of life would be achieved. And something that you and I could never imagine when we were alive. Now the question is, can it be world peace? I would say no, because you and I can somewhat relate to or somewhat think what world peace would look like. I think it's gonna be extremely, extremely supreme. And it will happen. And it all depends on my action in this life. So what is my version of dying? What I believe in happens after you are dead is that you are dead. I, I, no, seriously, I don't believe in afterlife. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in heaven or reincarnation. I do believe in rebirth of some kind. Maybe some molecule as mud or flower or, or insect. That would be because either I'll be burned or I'll be buried after I'm dead. So those are actually, well, you are scientists, so those are actually my, my, it's my bone, my body, getting mixed up with soil. So it is going to give some result, but it won't be another human or another, you know, official living creature. So I think what we have to do is, in this, the, imagine if you're, you take a rebirth, do you think it will be this phenomenal? I mean, if you already know that you are going to born again, do you think you are going to do anything in this life? It will be so boring. And I think, I think being just alive once is what makes it so beautiful, to love each other. So I think how we cannot fear death is by find, finding a purpose of life, which can be different for you and I. But I think we have to define it. We have to define it in this life. And we have to achieve it with our actions in this life. And I truly believe that death is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. Because it is unique. And it gives us, a, well, truly gives us meaning, meaning to our lives. So <clears throat> I really want you guys to define purpose of your life. And I would love to listen to those. And I would also love to listen to the version of your dying, your tale, your story. Thank you.